story one. My brother Jason died three years ago. His widow, Lori, refused to return the necklace he had given her, which had belonged to my great-grandmother. The necklace wasn't expensive or worth anything except sentimental value, and we had wanted it to stay in the family. Jason and Lori didn't have any children to pass it on to. Nevertheless, Lori refused to give it back. Fast forward to a few weeks ago. I got a message on social media from Lori asking to meet. She comes over to my house and explains that she's had a tough time since Jason's death and is now in a significant amount of debt, which they were even in when he was alive. She then says she would be willing to sell my great-grandmother's necklace to me for $1,000. If an appraiser ever had a look, the necklace would say be worth about $150. I told Lori she was out of her mind to come and attempt to extort money out of me with a piece of my family history, among other things, that were not as child-friendly. Eventually, she left. My mom is pretty angry. I didn't buy back the necklace. She says I should have tried to negotiate with Lori, and that standing on principle was stupid. My dad, the necklace came from his side of the family, agrees with me. The thing is, I made peace with not having the necklace. I have something to remember about that particular piece of family history, a ring from the same jewelry set. And as crappy as I found it that Lori wouldn't return it, it felt even more slimy that she held it to ransom all these years later. The thought of her profiting from what I consider a misdeed in the first place doesn't sit right with me. However, my aunts have heard about it and are on my mom's side. So now I'm wondering if I made a bad decision. Am I the idiot for refusing to buy back a family heirloom? Edit, my valuation is arbitrary, but it's based on fact. I know how much 9 carat gold costs on average, and I can make a decent estimate. $1,000 is not even in the ballpark. We asked her about the necklace seven months after he died. She was grieving in peace for three years. I didn't contact her to bring this up. She did. You are the idiot. I think it's pretty crappy to think a woman whose husband died needs to return a gift that he gave her. It was hers the moment her husband gave it to her. Did you even consider that it has even more sentimental value for her? I'm very sorry for your loss, but it doesn't negate the deep loss she is experiencing as well. Yeah, and his body is hardly cold in his grave when his sister goes up to his widow and says, in effect, now that my brother is dead, you're no longer part of this family so give me back the jewelry he gave you. Opai says seven months have passed. Seven freaking months later, and they ask for the necklace back. He wasn't even dead a year. I can't even imagine having the gall to ask at that point. Interesting that no one in your family seems to care that the widow of your brother is struggling so much that she's forced to sell off the gift her dead husband gave her. What a lovely family. This wasn't a sale. It was 100% extortion, and that's horrible. She could have gone to a jewelry store or pawn shop if she simply wanted to sell it. In fact, she probably did, and they wanted to give her $50. She figured she could get more from family. Screw that. If sister-in-law wants to sell it, it's not that valuable to her, so let's not have our hearts bleeding for this idiot. If she'd taken it to a pawn shop, then Op would be on here saying she knew I wanted it and sold it to strangers. She should have at least given me first dibs if she were selling it. Lori couldn't win. It's not extortion either. You don't know what extortion means. Offering to sell someone something they've previously indicate they want is not extortion. That's bargaining. No one knows its true value. Everyone is just guessing. And the op has already established that there's sentimental value involved. So that gets added to the appraised value, which needs to be established. I think Op's not the idiot because it's not Op's problem. You made your peace with not having it, which is great. But your aunts and mom can gather up a thousand dollars and contact Lori before she sells it to somebody else if it's so important to them. They better hurry though, Lori seems eager to sell, maybe they can even bargain her down. So this had been eating at me for a while, and I really need some outside perspective. My sister 32 and I 30 male have had a rocky relationship for years, still things really came to a head recently. I was something that might seem trivial to some a wedding dress backstory when I was 22. 
I got married for the first time young. I know I had this beautiful custom-made wedding dress that was my dream in every way away. Two days before the wedding my sister, who was going through a rough patch, breakup, job loss, accidentally spilled red wine all over it while intoxicated. The dress was ruined beyond repair, and I was heartbroken. We had a huge fight, and I ended up wearing a last-minute replacement that I've always despised. Our relationship never fully recovered, and my marriage ended two years later for unrelated reasons. Fast forward to now, I'm engaged again and planning my wedding. My sister, who is also engaged, approached me to ask if she could borrow my new dress for her wedding. She said she's on a tight budget and can't afford a dream dress. I've invested a lot into my new dress, ensuring it's everything I wanted the first time. It's another custom piece, and I've been looking forward to wearing it for months. All the old feelings resurfaced when she asked, and I told her no. I explained that her past actions and the lack of trust between us made it impossible for me to lend her something so important to me. She got incredibly upset, calling me selfish and bringing up how we should be family and support each other. Our parents and some mutual friends think I'm being too harsh and should let bygones be bygones. They say I'm the idiot for not helping her on her special day, especially since she apologized for the past, though I always felt her apologies were more about getting past the consequences than genuine remorse. So, am I the idiot for refusing to lend my sister my wedding dress after what happened years ago? For heaven's sake, of course you're not the idiot. This is your dress, and there's nothing selfish about not sharing it. The people who think you were selfish can chip in for a dress for your sister, if they're adamant about it. And please make sure your dress is locked up somewhere safe, so that she doesn't have another accident that destroys yet another dress of yours. If she's on a tight budget, she needs to find a dress within that budget or postpone the wedding until she can afford her dream dress. What happened to the crappy replacement dress after she destroyed wedding dress one? I wish she still had the wine-soaked dress to lend her. She can have that, lol. It's your wedding dress. Custom gowns have a lot of money invested in them. Your sister needs to find a dress of her own in her budget. The fact she's asking you to use your dress now gives vibes she didn't accidentally spill the wine on the dress for your first wedding years ago. I think we all know that there was nothing accidental when she spilled wine all those years ago. She did it because she was jealous of you, and no one would blame you for not trusting her with your new dress and the fact she wants to wear your custom special wedding dress first before you. I would maybe understand if she asked for it after you wore it for your wedding, but this is absurd. She's a mooch and would have found a way to ruin the dress conveniently after it looked nice all day for her pictures and event. I'm sorry, Opie, your family is toxic. Long story short, my husband asked his mother to come over today and watch our daughter infant, so I could nap because lately the baby hasn't slept at all and I'm just exhausted. She's super colicky and throws up in her sleep too, so I'm just up almost always because she has choked on her own before. My husband is a trucker and is currently on a week-long trip away. She agreed to come over for a few hours and even offered to make dinner. I appreciated it so much. She got here at 2.30 p.m. I got the baby down for a nap, took a quick shower, and then went in to take a nap. When I woke up at 4 p.m. to my daughter screaming, I immediately rushed out of bed and found her still in her crib, diaper not changed, and she'd been crying for a while by the looks of things. I went into the living room and didn't see my mother-in-law anywhere, so I went to my bedroom to grab my phone and realized it wasn't on the charger where I left it. The baby monitor was also unplugged from my wall, which would explain why I didn't hear my daughter at first. Well, I went back into the kitchen and saw my mother-in-law through the window on the back porch, talking on the phone. So I got out, and she's literally talking on my phone. So I interrupted her and asked why she had my cell phone, and how long she'd left my daughter screaming in the other room when she was supposed to be watching her, and asked why my monitor had been unplugged. She goes, well I heard your phone ringing, and it was my son so I answered it and took it outside so I wouldn't wake you, and I unplugged the monitor so the baby wouldn't wake you if she did start crying. She wasn't crying when I walked outside. I asked her how long she'd been on my phone outside, and she looked at the time of the call and said 37 minutes. 
I immediately told her to get the heck out again, and that my daughter had very obviously been screaming for a while. Her eyes were puffy, and when I picked her up she was hyperventilating and sweating. She'd been crying for at least ten minutes, if not longer. She started in with the whole, it's not gonna hurt a baby to cry. I didn't hear her, or I would have gone in to get her talk. So I said, yeah, but instead you decided to steal my phone and go talk to my husband for 40 minutes and fail to do the task you came here for. Leave. She ends up leaving. But now my husband is mad at me because she didn't even have to come help, and you made her feel damn stupid because she didn't grab the baby as soon as she started crying. Don't be surprised if she never helps again. I don't think I'm the idiot, but my husband is making me feel absolutely insane here. Am I the idiot? Edit. Whether or not the baby will be fine after crying for 10 minutes isn't the problem. The problem was that she was at my house for an hour and a half, 20 minutes of which I was awake, and during that time she spent 40 minutes outside on my cell phone instead of watching the baby like she was supposed to. She didn't check on my daughter at all for 40 minutes, knowing she's colicky and has a history of spitting up in her sleep and unplugging my monitor so I couldn't even hear her. She didn't even have to come to help you. Well, she didn't, so mission accomplished. The task failed successfully. When you want nothing done, she's your gal. You are not the idiot. Exactly. Not the idiot for telling mother-in-law to get out when she came over claiming to help you, but instead ignored and neglected your child. And what was so important that she needed to go outside and talk for 40 minutes? She's always kept my husband on the phone for hours, even when he's home and says he has to go. She claims she barely knows him anymore because he works so much. And when he isn't, he's home with me and the baby. So it doesn't surprise me that she was on the phone for 40 minutes with him. Oh, she's one of them. Google enmeshment and send him the link. None of this is okay. Now we see why your husband didn't back you up. He needs to remember he married you and not his mommy. Hubby needs to grow the heck up and get off his mom's tits. He needs to support you in this because mother-in-law is entirely in the wrong and so is he. And he's behaving pathetically defending her instead of you. I'm so sorry. It was my female 40th birthday a few days ago, and we had a reservation for a table at a nice restaurant for 7 p.m. It takes about 20 minutes to drive to the restaurant. So I plan to leave the house at 6.30 p.m. to get there in time for traffic and pick up my father. My husband, 43, had decided to do some work on his car about half an hour before we needed to leave. At 6.30, when the kids and I were waiting by the door, he was still doing it. He hadn't changed and hadn't showered. I told him to quickly get ready, but he got to 6.50, and he still wasn't ready yet, so I decided to just leave without him. He has a habit of always running late when we go out, and he's always the last one to be ready. Normally I can tolerate it since it only sets things back by 10 minutes at the most. But my birthday dinner was important to me and I'd been looking forward to it for weeks. Making us wait for 20 minutes was taking the mick, so I yelled out that we were leaving and left because I didn't want to lose the table since we would have arrived about 7.20. I called the restaurant to let them know we'd be late and luckily we still had our table. But my husband didn't show up at the restaurant and when we got home he was mad at me. I told him I was tired of him not respecting my time and always making people wait for him and that he could have made his way to the restaurant. My father agreed with my decision to leave without him, but my kids were a little upset that he wasn't there to have dinner with us. So am I the idiot. Eddie, he's always out of the house on time for work, and yesterday he went to the pub with some friends and wasn't late for that. He tends to be late only for things including the family. My husband likes my dad, but the feeling isn't really mutual. My husband likes the restaurant, we went there for his birthday too, which he wasn't late for. I was a stay-at-home mom until a few years ago. He changed when I returned to work, although I don't understand how that would affect his time management, unless there's a different reason for him being late. Not the idiot. You were already late when you left. If you waited any longer, you wouldn't have a table and thus no birthday party. When you got home, you should have torn him a new one for deliberately trying to sabotage your birthday party. Put him on the defensive where he should be for his behavior. 
Really though, when your husband decided to do some work on his car, you should have said no, you're not doing that. You're going upstairs and getting ready to leave with us. This was a totally predictable problem. In general, you should stop tolerating his lateness. When you do that, it gets worse, not better. I just wanted to mention one possible reason. Neurodivergence, particularly ADHD, which leads to time blindness and time management issues, that is not an excuse for behavior. It's a possible identification to look at tools and ways to tackle the behavior, but it has to come from within him. It's not on her to mother him, though. She showed she was not tolerating by leaving. He should have the awareness and discipline to not start that project 30 minutes before they had to go. She already coordinated everything for the family, including her dad and the kids. All her husband had to do was show up on time. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed your dinner, Opie. Make this a pattern with your husband and the problem will resolve itself. Either he'll figure out how to be on time or you will no longer need to be stressed out about it. The husband used to be on time. Opai was a stay-at-home mom, and this started when she went back to work. The husband is still never late to work or to any of his own events. My conclusion. This behavior is not related to ADHD or anything similar. This lateness is deliberate enemy action. Op's husband feels a lack of control now that Op has some independence, so his doing this passive-aggressive crap is his way of lashing out. God, what an idiot. I hope Op doesn't have to deal with any other crappy behavior patterns, but something tells me she does. My sister named my nephew Skylar. She's always called him Skylar and told everybody she knew he wouldn't be Sky, that Sky is a girl's name, and not even a good girl's name. Well, once my nephew started school, he started calling himself Sky, and all his friends, and even his teachers called him Sky. My sister was agitated, but expected him to grow out of it. She vented a lot about him going by Sky and how she couldn't understand Sky being such a popular nickname for a boy. My brother pointed out his name is Skyler, and Sky is the most common nickname for it, with Kyler being possible, but not really any better. My nephew is now a young teen, and he asked the family to call him Sky as well. We respect what he wants and call him Sky. He told me that he wanted to ask when he was five, but knew his mom would have a fit. But he no longer cares that she hates Sky. I think it's great he's doing what makes him happy. My sister is now freaking out that everyone calls him Sky except for her. Even her husband, Sky's dad, calls him Sky. She's tried to fight against Sky using Sky. She told him his name was Skylar and that he should call himself that because it would be confusing for people. She told him shortening your name isn't a must. Then she told him she forbids him from introducing himself by the nickname. He told her Sky is more his name than Skylar is by now, and she needs to deal with it. She ranted and raved about the disrespect and how he should have listened to her. I told my sister she can't control the name her son is using. Thanks for listening.